This is no land flowing with milk and honey. In fact, it's just the opposite here in the land of sugar. <laughs> Alongside the sugarcane stalks, these kids are growing up in a batay. It's a slum-like settlement, home for those laboring in the sugarcane fields of the Dominican Republic. The majority of workers in these fields come from Haiti, the country next door. The Dominican sugar industry relies heavily on the work of these migrants who leave their homeland behind. For many Haitians, a better way of life will be found right here in these batays, living communities built around sugarcane fields where they will work for long hours with low pay. To better understand life in a batay, we asked a Haitian who lived it. Is that a tough situation for, for Haitian immigrants to grow up in that environment? It is tough. Living in a batay is tough. But Moises Sifrin says it's way better than living in Haiti. It's worse in Haiti. Here in the Dominican Republic, at least people who cross the border have a hope. With an already long history of extreme poverty and political corruption, Haiti is now in a desperate situation. In 2021, the country's president was assassinated. Law and order is spiraling out of control, and widespread gang violence has taken its place. The United Nations providing a bleak update. The horrific violence in gang-ridden areas, including sexual violence, particularly against women and girls, is emblematic of the terror afflicting much of Haiti's population. So whether they have legal documentation or not, Haitians feel forced to flee into the Dominican Republic. For some, it's become a matter of life and death. Tough manual labor in the sugarcane fields and living in a batay is the only option. That's my people. <laughs> Moises Sifrin is what you might call a success story. He was born in a batay. His father cut sugarcane and eventually earned enough money to move the family into the city of La Romana in the eastern half of the Dominican Republic. Moises got a college education and is now CEO of a local hospital. He provides needed health care to Dominicans and Haitian migrants. And he's an advocate for those still living in the batays. He says conditions have improved since he was a kid. In general, it's getting a little better. It's better than when I was living in a batay. At least 90% of the Batays around here have a school. Education can provide a way out of the Batays, but there's not a guaranteed exit strategy for everyone. We met Papo, a Haitian man who has lived in a Batay for 30 years. Papo does not have legal status in the Dominican Republic, but he provides a needed service to the country and fills a job many Dominicans don't want. So he stays employed in the sugarcane fields without fear of deportation. But he says if he were to leave the Batay, when one leaves the bate and goes into town to purchase something or whatever, then they catch us in any way they can, and they take us. In effect, he's stuck here. It's important to note how the U.S. government has responded to the Dominican sugar industry. Last year, U.S. Customs and Border Protection reported signs of forced labor in the operations of Central Romana Corporation Limited, the largest Dominican sugar producer, citing isolation, withholding of wages, abusive working and living conditions, and excessive overtime. Sugar produced by Central Romana is now banned from entering the U.S. Meanwhile, Leone Batista is on a mission to make sure kids growing up in the Batays can leave the sugar cane behind. I think their parents spending 55, 60 years cutting sugarcane, I think that's enough. I don't think it should go on to the next generation. Batista runs a youth organization with the help of a nonprofit group called Cross Catholic Outreach to give children the opportunity to develop their talents and job skills. We have English, we have plumbing, we have electricity. We just started screen printing, digital marketing, we have sewing, we have arts and craft. At this batay outside the city of La Romana, we saw kids at the youth center dance and sing. Well, singing is my passion, and for that reason, I hope to sing. I was born in a batay, and I grew up in a batay. Now this young man, Ishmael, has left the batay, and he wants to lead others. He's learned English and plans to go to college. He's inspired by adults like Moises and Leone who want to make sure the future is a whole lot sweeter for the children who grow up here in the land of sugar. It's a passion. It's a heartfelt thing. It's something that I believe that God placed into my heart. Mark Irons, EWTN News In Depth.